So, the second part is about uh, a brief introduction into medical anthropology. I wrote my thesis on ethnomedicine in my region called Vojvodina on North Serbia. So, in that manner, ethnomedicine, medical anthropology precisely, became uh, one of my first love, to which, as a research topic, I always return. As you probably know, there are a couple of uh, branches of, um, I don't know how to change, ah, yes, sorry, yes. ah, yeah. Uh, there are a couple of branches in general in, of anthropology. Besides of a science, there is also the applied version, applied anthropology. So we have a, like a scientific discipline and its derivates, the uh, applied anthropology. As we saw from the precedent uh, lecture, we have the applied anthropology, for instance, into military purpose. That is the, uh, the bad example of applied anthropology. Uh, one of these branches is the medical anthropology. It's a very growing field because uh, medical anthropology, especially the applied medical anthropologists, can teach medical uh, doctors and nurses to treat uh, populations or part of populations which are uh, complicated, uh, difficult to, uh, uh, to approach or to access. Uh, other branches, for instance, social anthropology. It examines also uh, the parts of society on a micro level, macro level. Uh, to social anthropology also belongs medical anthropology, but sometimes not vice versa. So it depends which uh, level of uh, society do you uh, examine. And also uh, social anthropology has a methodology similar combines uh, similar methodologies as uh, so, uh, sociology. So that means qualitative and quantitative me methodology. Uh, on other branches, for instance, cognitive anthropology, which deals how people learn, how do they understand uh, the world around them. In its applied form, it can be very useful and it's often lucrative for anthropologists in Western society, meaning that they get a lot of money from firms uh, who are interested uh, in understanding how human brains work. They pay anthropologists in order to discover this inner mechanism of, uh, of learning. I will give you an example. I was asked to do a research uh, project about how people use coffee machines in Germany and France. A firm uh, based in France uh, and also in Germany, Krups, maybe you heard it, in, in Germany, it's like a big kitchen, uh, kitchen uh, appliances firm, asked me to, to go and visit people homes, how do they use machines. Actually it was very interesting because people start to learn about machine, then use it, they, for instance Germans like big cups, French have, uh, like small cups, when they confuse they push some other button, you, it, the usual thing that actually makes the research very interesting and uh, sometimes even funny. We have also urban anthropology, meaning anthropology uh, of the cities, how people live together, what kind of spaces do they need, what is a healthy city, what is a overcrowded city, what, uh, why a city has too much crime and so forth. These are the topics that urban anthropology, for instance, studies. And also a branch uh, that is also studied but, uh, by the uh, political scientists, the peace and conflict studies, in French uh, uh, tradition is called the polemology, is also a growing field of, uh, a developing field of social anthropology and anthropology in general. So what is peace, what is conflict, why a conflict is uh, uh, created, how people negotiate peace. Uh, these are the topics that this branch of anthropology potentially studies. Uh, a big organization who is connecting and also gathering every second year the best anthropologists or the anthropologists in Europe is the EASA, European Association of Social Anthropologists. So every second year they give a big, big conference 2,000 people usually gather, sometimes 2,500. I think recently they opened their gates, so now everyone who is doing anthropology or is anthropologist can become a member. 
So you can check their activities on the website and you can be become a mom member although you are uh, from Southeast Asia, I think. So speaking about medical anthropology, medical anthropology in English, you will often encounter these other expressions for medical anthropology. Anthropology of health, of illness, of medicine and it is defined as a uh, science interested in human diseases or health, uh, healthcare, healthcare system, uh, biocultural adaptations and so forth. Uh, one of its branches, interests, is ethnomedicine, points of interest of medical anthropology. Et ethnomedicine can be difficult, difficult with translated with difficulties I have been told in Vietnamese but in English you will encounter these terms so don't be, be surprised if you see one term or another traditional medicine, popular medicine, folk medicine all that is ethnomedicine so like you have like that the Kim ethnomedicine you have the Chinese ethnomedicine you have the Serbian ethnomedicine many medicines, so it's from the ground. It's often imagined that is in the opposition with biomedicine or the so-called Western medicine, like the doctors. It is imagined that way, but I like to think that it can be a partner to biomedicine. Now, this could be a definition of ethnomedicines around the world. No matter if it's skin medicine or Filipino ethnomedicine or Serbian or Hungarian ethnomedicine it's a biocultural adaptation and club the sum of biocultural adaptations uh, uh, knowledges and practices and beliefs about or of traditional et healthcare system and universes uh, ethnomedicine has also under branches like ethnopharmacology meaning the science the popular science about plants and uh, concoctions and so forth that people usually use so in the mountains or in the city and so forth yeah, like, like teas, uh, herbal teas, uh, uh, ointments and so forth that people usually make or the ethnokinesi therapy that is what we spoke about uh, before uh, this lecture about um, actually how uh, People, when they have, for instance, physical uh, problems like uh, uh, distorted ankles and hands, how they put it back. This is also a practical knowledge of, uh, of like, a, like kind of a massage, but a bit ser more serious. In applied form, we have ethnopsychiatry. These are a couple of uh, scientists who had a um, formation, a classical formation of psychiatrists in a medicine, in like a medicine faculty, but they understood that psychological problems can't be always treated in the same manner. When, uh, a psychic, uh, a psychological ill person in uh, Europe is not the same like the psychological ill person in Africa, it's not the same like in Asia and so forth. So it's very different between... Yes, uh, between cultures. Uh, you are not, for instance, if you hear voices, in Europe you are crazy, okay? <laughs> you need problems. But in Africa you are receiving messages from a uh, netherworld. For instance, uh, uh, you are potential shaman. Maybe you can heal people yeah. and so forth. So in every culture there is a different definition who is healthy and who is sick. This branch applied is very important to Europe because uh, Europeans have now new, uh, the, the populations who are coming from all around the world living in Europe. So if an individual coming from uh, Africa becomes ill psych psychologically, he can't go to a traditional uh, Western uh, educated psychiatrist because he won't understand. But the ex ethnopsychiatrist will understand and will be able to, to help him or to combine a method that, that can be help, helpful to him. These uh, people, ethnopsychiatrists, have to have a medical education, um, education of a doctor in medicine and uh, psychiatry, but they have to have also an anthropological education in order to become ethnopsychiatrists. 
that means 10 to 15 years of university education and research. This is very heavy, very difficult, but very, very interesting. This is uh, the method of uh, medical anthropology is also ethnography, in-depth interviews. That means that we speak, uh, one is noting down, that you should take notes or make videos or something, and then analyze, but you also have to observe or to be a participant observer. So if the person who, for instance, you are interrogating or you are speaking with and he or she claims to have seen spirits, it is so. It is certain, it is, uh, you do not question it. So this is like a postulate of uh, serious anthropological research. Um, what do you mean uh, Postulate? Uh, no. Uh, if the person, when, when we, when we, we, yeah, we doing ethnography, for instance, and you speak with the individual who claims to see spirits and saying demons, you have to take it seriously and describe it, do not doubt it, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, this is a law in anthropology, especially medical anthropology. Do not enter as the doctor should, you know, he or she has hallucinations. Do not do that. That would do uh, a, medi a medica medical doctor would do that. But as an anthropologist, you you are on the side of the one who is speaking to you. You understand him and you just uh, collect what he has to say. Different say uh, what is said and different beliefs and different practices are some parts of the same truth, and you have to be aware of that. The same truth. Different uh, different opinions, different sayings yeah. are the part of the one one universe. These are just elements in that collective uh, truth. Yeah. They they yeah. shape our world. Different beliefs shape their their world and in that sense your world too. So you, what you hear is important because it is for, if the, for the person this is true, it is true for you. It is not being naive, it is being careful what the other has to say. Careful. It is not being naive, yes. It is being careful what the other person has to say. So the topic of medical anthropology are medicines, not just one, but several medicines. Uh, health and illness related beliefs, what is healthy, what is ill, practices, if for instance washing hands is believed to be healthy or not, customs related uh, to, to these health and uh, illness uh, uh, projections, uh, and the knowledge, that is the topic of many, many, one of the topics of medical anthropology. Um, today. Sorry, uh, what do you mean by uh, medicine? Medicines, that there is not just one medicine, but many of them. Because in Vietnamese medicine, there, there is no plural. Meaning, like the... Aha, not the medication, mm -hmm. but like system of medicine. Western medicine, uh, uh, Eastern Chinese medicine, traditional medicine, uh, and so forth. That there are many, yeah. many of them. As an anthropologist, you should be aware of them, that it, there are many of them. Uh, the goal is also, among other things, to create a traditional nosological system. What does it mean, nosology? Nosology, nosos in Greek means um, illness or disorder. Uh, it means that in popular medicine, you have different illnesses than in a biomedicine. For instance, uh, uh, popular medicine knows uh, for illness that is the fear. Popular medicine thinks that, in some popular medicine, that the fear is like a demon, a creature that enters your body. In biomedicine, that is out of the question. So as an anthropologist, you should be aware that there are illnesses that do not fit into the category of biomedicine, but can be created like a repertoire of traditional illnesses. For instance, uh, in the Balkans, they believe that the woman has a uterus, you know, her mattress, uterus, uterus, it's like where you have the baby, you yeah. know, yeah, that can flow, it floats in the body. 
And if it's here or here, it, because it's floating, yeah. you, you can't have a baby. But there is a woman who will fix it and put it back on its place. What's the, <laughs> what's the one uh, floating around? Floating, uh, like, a, like in a river. You are, you are full of, like full of water, it is imagined that you are full of water. And your uterus is like, you know, sometimes here, sometimes here, you know, it goes around. It's floating. So that's an illness, you know, that's, that's a disorder. And there is a place to it in a nosological system. But biomedicine do not recognize this as a problem. So there are different stages in medical anthropology how to proceed to collect, describe and to analyze. That means an ethnography. Compare with other systems. That is very important in medical anthropology. Now that is anthropology. Uh, sometimes you can discover very interesting things. It happened to me. Uh, in specific ethnic cultural disorders become evident. For instance, in uh, Central Europe and, and the Balkans, it is believed that fear enters the body and starts to rule. It enters slowly, it enters like a little creature, and with time it grows, and finally you are depressive, you are scared, and so forth. In Southeast Asia you have, I think, uh, Hakka it's called. And in South America it's called Susto. South, uh, Southern uh, um, America, Susto. And Hakka here in Southeast Asia, but not in Vietnam, I think, uh, Indonesia. So that is interesting. Same thing. Described the same manner, treated more or less similarly, but as an illness is described in Europe, in South America, and in Asia. It's important to draw a parallel, then you get an understanding that maybe biomedicine forgot to examine something. Or you have the evil eye uh, in Europe and Northern Africa, maybe in Asia, meaning that the person who does not want to hurt, but nevertheless have an evil eye, looks something, uh, maybe desires it, and he cast on, or she cast on, on unwittingly a spell, you know? What is uh, Evil eye? Yes. Uh, evil eye is a look, the gaze of a person looking something that he or she wants. Okay. And maybe he is not, or she is not aware of it. But it brings harm to the person. For instance, little children ah, okay. or uh, pregnant women, mm -hmm. they should be protected from evil eye. That means from people who do not want them to bring harm, mm -hmm. but unwittingly they okay. make harm. Yeah. I will tell you now an example uh, from which you can understand how seriously evil eye is taken. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, called to teach health workers in France, in Limoges. Uh, I was, uh, uh, they asked me to come to teach to the nurses, and uh, mainly nurses and some medical doctors uh, uh, about, the, about uh, Central European and uh, Eastern European culture. Uh, there is a belief in the Balkans and Central Europe. If someone has a nice baby, beautiful baby, the person who sees the baby should not say, this is a beautiful baby. The same in our Yeah. They are afraid of evil eye, uh, the desire, and uh, the, the evil will hear the words, beautiful baby, and will come and take away the baby. So the health workers were surprised when assessing the health of the baby, that the mothers always were like stressed, you know, nervous. Yeah, nervous, stressed, did, didn't like, and some speed. <laughs> <laughs> French nurses were like, why? The baby is healthy, why not? So I told them, you do not say the baby is beautiful, you say you are ugly, ugly, but with a smile. So the mothers usually spit to chase away the evil spirits. Which was surprising to the nurses. For, because my field is Central Europe and the Balkans, this is what we can see as different, uh, different branches of ethnomedicine in that region. 
ethnopharmacological approaches, meaning healing with plant, plants, concoctions, and teas, anointment, anointment, sorry, traditional kinesi therapy, blacksmith for the bones, putting bones back to the place, that is the expression, or magical approach, spell, incantation and charms, and ritual behavior. Uh, in Central Europe and the Balkans think that an illness is not out of the, uh, it's something not natural. It can't be some natural process. It's certainly brought by the demons or unsatisfied ancestors or uh, on an evil eye or an evil person who, who wishes somebody uh, something evil. So they imagine the illness as a disorder in English, out of the order. You will encounter this belief also in Africa, black Africa. Anthropologists work with uh, medical uh, doctors uh, from World Health Organization against fighting Ebola in Africa. Because uh, for the Africans in that area of Congo where Ebola has its cradle, more or less, uh, they think that illness comes from a witchcraft. No, can't be a germ, can't be a virus. It, it has to be a witchcraft. So when a, someone died from Ebola, they went into the hospital and stole the body or hide the body in order to accomplish rituals before burying. And of course, Ebola is highly contagious. Everybody who was in the ritual also became ill, and also 60% died of them. So medical doctors had a problem, could not stop the virus. So they asked anthropologists to come and try to explain, to give an answer. So anthropologists explained this need for a ritual and made a um, made, tried to create a new ritual to, to please the population but also to protect them from Ebola as the health workers wanted. So it was very interesting. They taught people uh, when they come, they want to wash the body and so forth, they give them everything, costumes to protect them and they protected, accomplished the ritual of burying the body in a coffin which prevents the virus to spread in the nature. Uh, they uh, cover the body? Yes, they, they wash the body ritually mm -hmm. and uh, they put it back in a protected, like, like a coffin or a bag or something mm -hmm. that stays steel, sealed mm -hmm. in order to prevent the, uh, the virus go right. out of the ground. Yeah. So in this manner, everybody is happy. Population gives a burial, they see that the person died, they say goodbye, and they are also protected, and the medical doctors uh, are sure that the virus will not spread. In similar manner, in Central Europe and the Balkans, traditionally, they believe, people believe that Creatures from the upper world, these are the expressions that you will encounter in, in, in the literature about that. In the upper world, nether world, world of dead or world of ancestors or parallel world. They are the ones who bring illnesses to people to punish them. These are the creatures that bring illnesses in the Balkans and Central Europe, more or less. Fairies, demons and saints considering that saints are, are the Christianized versions of demons and fairies. Uh, in Serbian culture, uh, saint protector, every family has a saint who protects them. When illness comes, it's usually a message from the saint to accomplish something, to, to be, go more often to church or to, to repent or to go to the cemetery and accomplish a ritual and so forth. This has nothing to do with official Christianism. This is the baby between uh, ancient beliefs and beliefs conne connected to the ancestor, ancestors and the Christian uh, imaginary popular beliefs. There are a couple of interesting types in uh, Balkanog Balkanic uh, nosological system. The fairy illness, illness that brought by the fairies, Beautiful, long-haired women, usually dressed either in white 
usually in white, but sometimes in black, or many in white and one in black. Uh, sorry, can you uh, yes, explain there are, the dragon in Ah, that I'm keeping for the end because the dragon illness, uh, because we are in Vietnam and this is the country of the dragon, I will expa uh, explain at the end. So, what's the fairy illness? Types, fairy illnesses, illnesses that are brought by the fairies. The creatures, fairy? yes, no, uh, creatures from upper world, nether world, world of the dead. Usually, imagine that beautiful ladies with long hair, dressed in white, or one, uh, one in black, others in white. or a couple of in, uh, in black, for instance. These are women who, young women, who died before they were ready, they, they had their wedding or they died in childbirth and uh, they did not accomplish a stage in their lives, so they are dead prematurely. Interestingly, in the Balkans they can help, but they can punish. As you go toward North and Western Europe, they punish. Uh, the the fairies the can help people, but they can punish. You know, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, but when will the uh, police? But when they please, we never know. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> um. they are capricious. You know, like young women, very capricious. Capricious meaning uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. It depends how they woke up that morning. You know, never know. <laughs> <laughs> so, for instance, you are walk, walking in a forest and you crush a flower or you are picking up a flower or something. If you don't like it, you will become ill. There are still women, uh, I did research a couple of months ago, there are women who still see fairies living in the mountains. These women, uh, once or twice in a year, see fairies and they're communicating with them and bring messages to the world of the living. It's very strange but these women uh, really see them, saying, they told me that they're seeing them, there are three of them and they uh, brought me messages from my father who died 30 years ago, uh, what to do in my life, what not to do and so forth. You have also the evil eye, this uh, talk about it. That is a jealous person or a jealous neighbor or someone who had a look on something. And you have the fear which originally was a demon and now it's called the fear. It's not demon anymore but it's, it's the fear who enters the body. And you have also a couple of natural illnesses like a cough, a cold that are treated only with plants and usually plants uh, are sufficient. Now, speaking about the dragon illness, this is a subcategory of a fairy illness. That means that a fairy, fairy brought it, but in this case, it's not a fairy. Uh, it is imagined that the dragon, the volcanic dragon, is the male uh, brother of a fairy. And uh, considering that we are in Vietnam, this is very interesting, like an illness. It attacks only young girls usually very pretty one. It is imagined that the dragon has seen the pretty lady, the young girl, and he is falling for her, he is in love with her. So she is losing appetite, uh, she can't sleep, uh, she doesn't look well, she's tired, uh, not really ill but not really well either. It's also connected with the weather in that region. If there is a big storm with a lots of wind, that means that he is making a wedding. He's, that's a wedding ceremony and he is coming to get her. So if not treated, the girl can die. That means that he married her. So usually there is an older woman, usually they are women, a popular healer, a traditional healer woman. And she is the one who sees, can see, she makes the diagnosis. Uh, if, it's a, uh, if it's a dragon illness, then she says it's Zmechet Boles, a dragon illness uh, in South Slavic languages, Zmechet Boles. Okay. She, she makes the diagnosis and she treats the patient, the girl also. Uh, for starters, she, she sees, she communicates, she enters into a trance and she communicates with the fairies and the fairies say if it's a dragon illness or not or a fairy illness or a natural illness. 
the healer woman usually enters in some kind of trance, dancing, sing, singing until she is in the other, she is out of herself. She's she's in trance. A healing procedure is also complicated. For instance, uh, she washes the patient. Uh, the patient has to go into the mountain, leave uh, presents for the dragon, or uh, she she gives her teas, or she wash her with teas, uh, teas, or she has to make some kind of sacrifice in order to please the dragon and make him go away. There are mainly two ways how the healer ple please the, pleases the dragon or the fairy. Usually it goes like with sweet words. I'm your little sister, go away. Uh, I, I will give you knife, I will give you nice presents, go away. Usually. But often you can hear uh, she um, menaces him. She says, I'm, my soul is going to be a dog. And uh, my soul, in a form of dog, is going to hunt you down, and he's going to, or she is going to chew you up, and you are going to disappear. So that uh, what the woman? Is. She is menacing him. That means uh, that she is threatening him, threatening. No, him. Yeah, them threatening the fairy or threatening that I will come. My soul will transform. Usually, it's a transformation into a, 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 a dog. And my dog will, you know, my soul in a form of dog is going to hunt you down and eat you up and you have to disappear. So first she start, usually they try sweet, 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 usually it's sweet. But if it doesn't happen then, yes. So this dragon illness is very rare, do not exist anymore, you will not hear anymore, only in the archives. But the fairy illness is very much present, still present in the Balkans. So people still believe that someone who is very tired, out of energy, uh, or uh, Ill, Ill kind, but not really Ill, that he stepped into the fairies uh, circle, meaning that he was in the nature and he disturbed the fairies, and that's his punishment. So next time when you walk in the volcanic forest, do not pick strange fruits <laughs> or flowers. Lần tới mà nếu các bạn có đến thăm một cái khu rừng ở vùng Bát Căng thì đừng có mà hái hoa, hái quả gì cả. Thank you very much. Thank you.